Hi everyone, my name is Maria Varghese and I invite you to join me for the third lesson of the Bible Sketchbook Project. Today we are going to look at one of the greatest commandments written in the Bible. Do you enjoy baking? One of the things about baking, especially when it comes to cakes or cookies, is the need for exact measurements and ingredients. Let's take a banana bread, for example. My favorite recipe has eight ingredients. Each of these ingredients plays a role in the final result. None of these ingredients are alike, but they need each other to turn into a bread. Besides the ingredients, they also need time and heat to turn from a humble fruit to a batter and eventually into a loaf. If you leave it in the oven for too long, it will burn. If you take it out too soon, it will be sticky. Now the ingredients themselves can't turn into a bread. Someone has to combine them in a certain way for that to happen. That is what God is doing in our lives and in our neighborhoods. He is taking each of us with our unique personalities and characteristics and placing us in situations and communities that will help us and others grow into the people that God has intended. When he places us in the mixing bowl, if we quarrel and complain and find it impossible to get along, then his bread is going to need more time. That is why when Jesus was asked, which command in the law is the most important? Jesus answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and most important command. And the second command is like the first. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus did not say love only the neighbors who are like you, because that is not possible. There are no two people in the world who are exactly like each other. Not even twins have the exact same personality. So that brings us to why we need to love our neighbor. Because God has placed them in our life for a reason. We rarely get to choose who that neighbor is. God has chosen them for us. All we can do is love that person, not because we think like them or look like them or talk like them, but because God has put them there for his purpose. What does that love look like? The Bible says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. This explanation of love does two things. One, it tells us what love is, and two, what love is not. Because in the process of loving your neighbor, things like envy, pride, and anger will come in the way. Because the devil, if you recall from the lesson on good versus bad, wants to disturb your peace. So he won't make it easy for you to love your neighbor. Therefore, the next time you come across someone who is difficult to love, whether that's someone in your own home or outside, don't think about how they need to change, but think on how you can be the better neighbor. While the command to love your neighbor is mentioned many times throughout the Bible, it's one of the hardest things for us to practice. So for our art activity today, we are going to come up with ways that make each of us into better neighbors. Let's start by adding the date, the topic, and the Bible verse. Now on a separate sheet of paper, I want you to make a list of people that you love. Next to their names, I want you to list things that you would do for them because you love them. 
I'm just making a very general list to give you an idea. You should take some time to think about the things you're already doing for the people that you love. Now we're going to make one more list and this one is going to have your skills and personality traits that make you different from those around you. You may need to ask someone you trust to help you with this list because others can see what makes us unique better than we can see it ourselves. For the drawing today, I want you to first draw a mixing bowl in the middle. Decorate the mixing bowl however you like. Around the mixing bowl, I want you to draw a pantry filled with ideas from both the lists we made. List 1 has things we like to do for the people we love and list 2 has things that make us unique. Your pantry or cupboard should carry things from both these lists. In my pantry, I've shown a gift box and a greeting card as examples of things we could do for others. I've named some jars after personality traits to show that each of us is unique for a reason. I have book titles to show hobbies and some board games to show fun things we can do with others. The purpose behind this exercise is to create a visual toolkit filled with ideas to help us when we are faced with someone we find hard to love. Because loving the person who is always good to us is easy. But loving someone who has hurt us or has been disrespectful takes special effort. So reach into this pantry, look at all the love ingredients available to you and combine them in different ways and apply it to that relationship so your bread turns out exactly the way God had intended.